Hey, everybody. Welcome to day three, Breakfast with Bob from beautiful Edmonton, Canada. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spas, S Fuels, Go Longer, Quintana Roo, Hoka Oneone, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot Sports, the original triathlon brand, Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation, our next guest, bronze medalist from the Olympics, Mr. Henry Skoman. How you doing, Henry? Yeah, I'm good. I'm so, so glad to be back at a race. Oh, uh, no, you are a racing guy. When you come from that WTS, you race every weekend. This must have driven you crazy. Yeah, generally, like, I race quite often. It's sometimes, you know, three, four times a month. So, yes. you know, and uh, my last race was almost exactly a year ago. Really? So you've been raced for a year? No, n not for a whole year since the Olympics. I, uh, so I happened to fracture my talus at the Olympics. Yes. And that kind of just it was a big blow and, yeah, it just took me out completely. So... Um, to finally feel the race nerves in here in race week, like I'm pretty excited. I bet you're excited. That that is like the coolest thing. How did uh, how did getting the bronze change your world, or did it? Yeah, it it obviously yeah definitely did. You know, like it changed so much for me uh, in many ways. Yes. Um, I think I changed the, the the sport in South Africa first, and and uh, more uh, awareness. Yeah, exactly. Like the th there's new generations that have come through since that. And like, there's just more awareness of the sport in South Africa, whereas before it only used to be like swimming, athletics, right? Uh, you know, rugby, soccer, those kind of things. And now at least they're taking note of triathlon, and we can see like a new wave of um, athletes coming through. When did you get to the point where you felt like I think it's time to move longer distance? Well, I mean, I haven't really moved. Uh, so, you, to is the, Paris still in play? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like um, Paris is still a, a big goal of mine. Awesome. Um, even the Super League, I, I love to take part in that. Yes. But, you know, I, I love to mix up the distances, and, and that's why I like the PTO. It's such a nice distance as well. Like that Don't you think? 100K. It's, a little, like, it's, you know, you're training that way anyways. If you're an ITU guy, you're doing the mileage for 100K. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, it, it's, it's a little bit shorter than the 70.3. So you can really, like, get away with it by training for the Olympic distance. Right. No question. And... This course, well, a million dollars on the line. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of money. Yeah. 70, 50. I think it's one of those races because there's so much money and so much of a it's sort of a backstop because you know you blow up, you're, you know, you're getting two grand if you get to the finish line. So don't you think people are going to be going for it out there figuring, hey, why not take uh, a chance here? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be one of those people. Aren't you for right? For sure, yeah. You're going for it. I'm going to take the course on. Like, I think it's suited so well for me. and. We don't see this kind of course in the longer distance. So, I mean, I think a lot of the longer distance guys will be a little bit rattled, I think. And the shorter, like guys like me who like to be aggressive, you know, right. up on the front and pushing it up those climbs in the technical bits, I'm going to be one of those guys and, you know, seeing what I can do and make things exciting. Well, also, you're, there's a payback. Or a, 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 you know, if you get away, you attack with a 20 meter draft rule. They, 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 people can't just sit on you. Yeah, exactly. So I think that 20 meter as well is going to help a lot. A lot. Uh, I'm also wondering how it's going to you know, Be play on, on such a technical course. But I guess we'll, we'll find out. I'm sure the athletes are going to respect that and we're right. going to try our best. Exactly. It's fascinating because when you do Daytona or a race like that and it's 20 meters, or you know the challenge championship it's a big wide road it's pretty easy to see yeah. the difference between 12 meters 20 meters but when you've got three punchy little climbs on each lap and there's going to be gaps opening gaps closing all the it's, time yeah. it's, i think the officials could be a, a big part of this yeah i think there's making, literally yeah. only one straight on the course and it might only be about two k's <laughs> and the rest is just like either up or down so it, <laughs> it will be quite interesting and tricky i guess i love it uh so this last Olympics, uh, DNF, was that because of the being sick or? Uh, so that was uh, because of my injury. Okay. Um, three weeks before the race, uh, we yeah something was happening in the in the ankle. We couldn't right. really tell what was going on, uh, but you know like I I, I I took the flight to Tokyo. You know going yeah. all all in, and obviously I'm I'm paying the price for that. And you know I ended up fracturing my talus and my ankle because you went in with an injury and you know yeah. listen it, when you get a chance to race in the olympics you get to duct tape a body part oh, on yeah. oh to, yeah you're gonna do whatever it takes to get of, the of course line. i mean the olympics only comes around so often and, and i think that's why it's so iconic and it brings athletes to new levels but when you go into that olympics with like gold medal type of form you right. know you go all in right so uh between now and will you be doing 70.3 worlds what uh what else will you be doing this season 
Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I, I just want to kind of get back into racing, and this is like my first step back into it. So um, I've got the Commonwealth Games after this next week. Yes. And yeah, and you've uh, taken a gold and a silver, right? In yeah, Commonwealth? yeah, I've got a gold and a silver, defending my gold from last year. So that's going to be super exciting. Uh, this is like a nice tune-up, I guess. Yes. Um, so it, it'll be good. Uh, a little bit more controlled, so you can really see like where the form is at, um, how's the foot feeling. Right. And uh, yeah, and test myself against the best athletes in the world. I mean, the field is oh. unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's good, it's good. Well, and, you're used to that from WTS. Every time you're like, oh, there's Gilmes, <laughs> there's Alistair, yeah. there's it's all so the It's so good business. for the sport. It, it's, we're just pushing each other, like pushing that boundary. And I think right. it's just making the sport so much more exciting. Well, especially beginning of the season now, you know, if you go to the US Open, if you go to uh, the Canadian Open, you're going to have the best field in the world. Right, so you're, you're able to push yourself against those guys multiple times, which is what you're used to. Yeah, it's such a good concept. I think, it, I think it's brilliant that we have, you know, like four races. Everyone is in their prime condition. Right. Just throw all the money at it and, it, and it creates sparks and it creates excitement. So I think it's just brilliant. Now, is Collins Cup in play for you? Or because you haven't done that much racing? Uh, I, I wanted to do it last year, and right. I really would like to do it this year. Um, hopefully, I catch the eye of, you know, Craig and A little Aaron. wild card? <laughs> yeah, a little wild card again. Well, and, I mean, uh, seriously, you end up podium here. You'd be four weeks away. You never know. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I'd love to put on a good show for them and, and hopefully, you know, um, you know, earn my spot on the, on, on the team. Right. That'll, that'll be great. So you're one of the first guys who, and I think the last time we chatted, you probably, well, you had a form of COVID, right? Before anybody knew, or coronavirus, before anybody knew what the hell it was. <laughs> and were you just, you got sick and it just wasn't going away? What happened? Yeah, so it was actually after the World Champs in Luzon. Okay. Uh, well, it actually happened during that week because I, I had a terrible race. I was feeling really off. Uh, we almost didn't go back home because my temperature was just like going out of control. Yeah. And we're like, should I take the flight? Because then I'm going to be on a plane for so long with, you know, not feeling great and yeah. the temperature's going up. So uh, we decided that, okay, we'll take the, the flight, get back home. And when I got back home, I just started getting worse and worse. Eventually I went to hospital and they ran a bunch of tests and it came back that my liver was basically failing. Oh my God. And yeah, I had to take off a com like six weeks completely off uh, just so that like the liver count uh, from the blood tests can like go back to normal. Yeah. And, but when they ran those tests in hospital, like it came back with one of them coronavirus. <laughs> You're like, what the hell's that? I, I Googled coronavirus and I was like, what is this? I'm trying to like dig on Google coronavirus. What is it? And you know, it's funny how few months later like we have this <laughs> everybody knows coronavirus. everyone knows coronavirus now so yeah but at that time when you went online google there was, there like, was like nothing, nothing there yeah nothing there so it was how like, long was recovery for you uh it took a while it took yeah. a while um out, like i said i was out for six weeks just completely uh, uh bedridden basically and then i started getting started my training again so it yes. took a good six months before um it was actually daytona um, yes. The PTO Daytona, which was my first like real race where I felt really good. Right. Um, after that. Was that uh, the PTO ones of 2020? Oh, I'm thinking about uh, COVID-19 I had, sorry. So yes. COVID-19, which yes. I had in 2020, that was uh, also like a good few months to yes. uh, get back to form. But uh, I'm thinking about the Super League in 2019. 2019, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, that's pretty wild that you had something that now, I mean, you can't walk up to any person on the planet and say coronavirus and have it. But there you're like, well, yeah, you, uh, corona what? I know, right? Yeah, it, it was so strange. Like, I mean, I obviously picked it up somewhere along the travels through Dubai. Yes. Because uh, it was a Middle Eastern strain. Um, so, yeah, super interesting, super strange. And fortunately, I, I bounced back to full health. Yes. And when I, you know, I look back at, you know, different you know, uh, shin stress fractures, 2009, out for you know two years. You you've gone through yeah. highs and lows in this sport. <laughs> I think we all do. Uh, you sort it, of have it to, right? It shapes you. It defines you as an athlete. It builds your character, and sometimes you have to go through those hard times to really learn from it. Because right. you're not going to learn as well from it if someone just tells you, you know, right. do this. Like you actually have to experience it, and then if you experience it, you come out so much better. Right. I mean, obviously, you're used to racing under the brightest lights with the, with the best field in the world. You go to the Olympics, that's what happens. Yeah. So you don't get intimidated by something like this. 
No. Uh, are, you, are you referring to the injuries? No, in terms yeah. of this rate. Oh, the Canadian the, Open oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I love it. I thrive off this kind of stuff. Like, the, competi the more competitive the field is, the more it pushes me, the more it motivates me. Right. Especially in training. Like, when I know I'm, I'm preparing for a big race, and I think that's why I really shine at those games, um, events, and, you know, those big ones that really matter. It's right. Because it pushes me beyond my limits. Sometimes a little bit far, like we saw before the Olympics. Yes. Uh, had the injury, but um, you know, again, I learned from that. I, I know where my boundary, um, where where it stands. So yes. hopefully, I won't go over that limit, but I can really, you know, nudge it. It's always fascinating when we're in Kona every year, and you know, there's that fine red line between being the absolute best shape of your life oh, yeah. and being injured and sick. Oh yeah, right. It's right there. That's and the you, one yeah. thing about the Olympics is that you want to actually just get there healthy because probably 50% of the field is there with an injury because they've pushed too hard. Right. So if you go there healthy, you're probably already winning the medal. I remember there was uh, Frank Shorter won the 1972 Olympic gold medal. And he, he, when I had him on the radio show once, he was saying, you know, the biggest mistake people make is they go to the Olympics and they try to do something they've never done before. They try, they need to be superhuman rather than <laughs> if you look at, especially yeah. in the marathon, if you look at the people who come closest to what they normally do, they're the ones standing in the podium. Yeah, exactly. Right? And so when you got your po when you got your podium, I'm guessing that was it wasn't something extraordinary. Oh yeah. Because you were you were you what you would train for was exactly what you put into practice. Yeah, our plan. I mean, everyone was for the Rio Olympics. Like we had the hill. Right. We had like the heat. <laughs> Looking back now after Tokyo, that heat was kind of nothing. But yes, yeah. Uh, you know, everyone went into like full heat prep, um, doing like insane hills. For me, like I had hills in my program already. Right. I live in Durban, which is already hot. So I just um, basically did my normal training as I usually did. Right. And, you know, just focused on, you know, improving, improving, improving. Because at that time I was still young, uh, very young in the sport and I was still continuing to improve. Right. So we just, you know, you know did just kept it, like thought of it as another race. It's another race. race. Exactly. It's another race. Another race and, you know, just focus on that, you know, like, and that's what we did and, and it worked out, it paid dividends. And this is another race exactly. with a million dollar prize purse. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the greatest fields ever assembled. <laughs> <laughs> For me, just with a TT bike. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that makes it so much more exciting. Like I love the TT bike. And you do. I, I love the drafting because I can use my, my swim to my advantage. Yes. My bike to my advantage. And, you know, and then like you can really play tactical games right. uh, when like the short distance racing, generally it just comes together and it's a run race. Yeah, you can't get away no. on the bike in the year. So a lot of people, they're, they're a billion a bike gets neutered. And if, in this, it comes to the top. Oh, yeah, yeah. I and I'm it. really like, I feel like I want to make a, a kind of a, a, a stance that I'm, you know, yeah. that I'm back. So let's see what I can do on that swim and bike. And then, yeah, the run, I guess we'll, we'll find out what, <laughs> where I'm at with that. I love it. Henry, thank you so much for taking time. I'm glad you're healthy. I'm oh, yeah, glad you're here. So much. Yeah, I, I love feeling those nerves again, so it's, uh, it's, it's exciting. Very cool. Henry Stoneman has been our guest. Again, Brex is Bob from beautiful Edmonton, Canada. Great race coming up on Sunday, and Henry's going to be out there kicking butt and taking names. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.